What's going on, everybody? Welcome, church. It's good to see you. Welcome to the virtual lobby. Good morning. We uh, we see right now that there are tons and tons of people logging on from all over. We have a a PGA golf pro a tuning on. What's happening? We have a professional skateboarder tuning on. We have some beautiful workout uh, lovers joining us. Who else do we got joining us? Colleen is What's joining us. Colleen, how's it going? Oh, we actually, uh, Lana and I visited Colleen and her mom oh, earlier man. this week. It was amazing. It was a good time. Good to see the church family. Yes. Uh, it's been so long, um, but it was just a, it was a good time catching up. Mm -hmm. We see Derek and Cindy on oh. YouTube. Ooh. We love you guys so much. Man, we miss you. We miss you. We miss you. But... What we want to say very, very, at the very, very beginning of today, we want to say happy Memorial Day weekend. Happy Memorial Day. Thank you to all of those who have served and even those who are serving at the moment. Thank you for everything that you've done to allow us to live in this free country, allowing us to go to sleep um, peacefully, knowing that there are those out there that are fighting for our freedom. So thank you for all of those that serve currently, but also we want to remember all of those um, that are no longer with us. And so happy, happy Memorial Day weekend. Yes, and all those who uh, have lost a loved one, who have lost a spouse, who have lost families, uh, fathers, yeah. sons, um, but are still fighting the good fight. All those yes. who have lost somebody in service, um, we also we have Jamie. Yeah. Um, she her late husband um, was a uh, in the military, mm -hmm. and we love how uh, she's a, she's a strong woman. Yes. And um, she understands uh, freedom, mm -hmm. and she uh, understands the sacrifice. But you know, all those people who have been affected, yeah. all the families affected by someone who was in the service and lost their mm -hmm. lives. We want to thank you also yeah. because of your sacrifice, allowing them to uh, fight for our freedom. Yeah. Thank you. And I might just add that at this very moment, we have two people, one retired and one that is still in the service. So can we hear a little what's up from you guys in the background? <laughs> love it, love it, love it. <laughs> It's good to see you guys. Everybody that is tuning on, people are tuning on from again from all over. Donna Dean, Nora, it's good to see you. Jamie is tuning on. Man, oh, we have a little message right there. That's for you from oh, Jaime. So it's Man. been how many years? Almost so ten many years, years that we've been having our church Memorial Day picnic. Man, almost ten years. That is years. crazy. And uh, unfortunately, this year the parks are open, mm. but yeah, we don't want to put anybody in a position yeah. to uh, be in danger. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, we will no longer, or we will not be having the Memorial Day picnic this tomorrow. Year. Yeah, um, but we will be with you guys in spirits. Man, um, those, those kickball moments. Yes, I mean, man, if you want to see a pastor really in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Join the Memorial Day picnic kickball game. It is it gets uh, wild. Yeah, it gets wild. It gets competitive. Mm -hmm. Very, 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 very competitive. Um, but we have again more people tuning on. Good to see everybody. Uh, what we want to remind everybody is to head over to our Instagram. Head over to our Facebook if you're already watching on Facebook. Um, even head over to our YouTube and like and subscribe. Um, if you're going over to our Instagram, follow our Instagram page. Give us a heart. Yes, the hearts. Uh, like the the photos. Give a little heart on the photo. Even comment on the photo. If you're on our Facebook, follow our Facebook page. We want to like hear that button comment. go. Comment. Bloop, bloop. That's not the sound, but, you know, wh whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. But go and start to engage with um, all the content that's going out. Now, we want to do our very best to get information out to you, but not only information, but we want to get um, basically just connect with you as much as we can through our social media. So I'd encourage you at this moment, pick up your phone. If you are not following our Instagram, not following our Facebook, or if you haven't been to our YouTube channel yet, go like, subscribe. I sound like a vlogger, but uh, we just want to connect with you. If you as do, there's much a promo code in the bio as possible. <laughs> you get 30% uh, off your blessings uh, this week only. <laughs> Memorial Day discount. Exactly. <laughs> 
the code is the code is um, mem day 2020. 2020. So one of my favorite things on Instagram, uh, aside from the church Instagram, is your Instagram. Well, I don't you. know if if, if any you. of you follow Pastor Chris's Instagram, um, but it is absolutely hilarious. Um, so it, if you are not following his Instagram right now, uh, go do that. It is one of the funniest Instagrams I have ever, ever watched. Um, but today you Thank brought you. some of your favorites. Yes. Um, I, I mean, especially now with everything going on, I believe, um, yes, we need to be... Uh, uh, educated, but we also need to laugh. Absolutely. I think that laughter, I love to laugh. Um, 99% of the time, I'm uh, just, you know, I'm, I'm, I would like to say I'm the goofball in the family, but I think all the Algueras have a, uh, they have a, they have a good sense of humor. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes I just, I, I throw in my um, sense of humor sometimes in the wrong moments. Yeah. Um, it'll be a serious moment. It's and true. just to break up the seriousness, I'll just throw in some humor. Yes. Um, but, you know, I, I love to laugh. Mm -hmm. And so I brought some. Um, I see him. You know, with everything going on, you know, everyone, you know, everyone was in uh, isolation. Mm -hmm. Everyone was in self-quarantine, self-lockdown, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, I, I just found it funny that once everybody was able to leave their house, all of a sudden, murder hornets. Yeah. Just at the right time. Just, I know, right? It's like perfect timing. Man. But then... You know, if the if the murder hornets don't get you, it's the murder death kill bunnies. Yes, of course. And and How there, forget those? there have been reports of uh, in Palm Springs of bunnies carrying diseases. So that's not too far it? off. Uh, and finally, if the uh, bunnies don't get you, gull sharks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now that the beaches are open, watch out for the gull sharks. They're gonna get you. Yeah, there's been reports of, um, you know, uh, in Australia, a dingo ate your baby. But gold, gold sharks, you have to worry about gold sharks. Yes. Um, you know, and, and I, I believe that 2020 has really been uh, narrated. If 2020 was narrated, you know, 20, maybe 18 was mm. by, uh, by Morgan Freeman. Yeah. But I believe 2020 has been narrated by the OxyClean guy. Because just when we get hit with gold sharks, but wait, there's more. <laughs> And uh, I, I feel like it just hits us out of the blue. Um, so it's very true. You know, now that the national parks, now the national parks are open, you have to really now worry about sniper monkeys. Yeah, you can't forget the monkeys. Can't for They're gonna get can't you. forget the sniper. And I, I, I feel like this is the weirdest one mm -hmm. because sniper monkeys are not known for leaving their natural habitat. Yeah. So it's just really out of their out of out of mm -hmm. their character. Yeah. And do you remember how did they how get all that training? It's true. Do you remember how everybody used to laugh at Michael Jackson for wearing uh, gloves and masks? Yeah. Now everybody out there be looking like they want to be starting something. <laughs> it's, it's no joke. I just don't <laughs> understand. <laughs> but, you know, now that everybody's wearing masks, a few months from now, mm -hmm. now that everybody's been wearing masks, we're yeah. going to be looking like this. I feel like that's what my ears look like right now. True. I, yeah, I'm always, like, adjusting yeah. the strap behind. Yeah. It's, it's the worst. Mm -hmm. But everyone's using hand sanitizer, yeah. but still we're in the habit of touching our face. But finally, mm -hmm. Tabasco has made a hand sanitizer that discourages the touching of your face. Yes, smart, smart. And you know, now that everybody's, uh, everything's opening up, but they're still encouraging, you know, wear your mask. I feel that after summer vacation, everyone's gonna be returning back to their church, mm -hmm. looking like this. Yep. It's just that's like summer tan. Summer tans. That's gonna yes. be the new summer tan. It yeah. won't be like sun. You know, everyone's like sunburn on your shoulders. Now it's gonna be like on your face. Mm -hmm. But it's good because now we're not touching our face. Summer twenty twenty tan. So those are just a few of the memes. I hope yes. you enjoyed them. If you want more, head over to Pastor Chris's Instagram. It is one of the most hilarious pages ever. But we are getting so so close to having a powerful powerful service today powerful. and worship experience we are so excited for the worship we're so excited for the word that is about to go forward and we just want to say we love you we love you we love you and we hope that you are ready for a great day
Well, for everybody that is just tuning in, welcome. we just came off of our virtual lobby, and we want to say welcome, welcome home welcome. to C3 Palm Springs. It is good to see you. Yes, it's good to be there with you in your home, live from inside your mobile device or streaming from your TVs. Yeah. We, we've, we've gotten some stats that are saying that people are watching not only from their phones, not only on their TVs, but game consoles, Ooh. which is interesting. Um, so if you're watching from your game console, I don't even know if you're able to join the chat, but if you can, let us know if you're joining from the game console. That's such a creative, smart way to join us. And it's a creative way to really get back at your children who are like, I want to play my game. And you're exactly. like, no. Mm -hmm. And uh, today what we want to do is we want to, we, we sent out on our Instagram um, to, to send us in uh, or send in some of your praise reports. So at this moment, if you'd like to send in some of your praise reports in the comments, just to really brag on what God has been doing in yes. this moment, in this quarantine time, we know that we're not just, um, just sitting around. God's not just sitting around. God is moving we feel like we may not be moving, we may not be going places, but God is moving. God is doing some incredible things in people's lives. We got, we've gotten some incredible praise reports so far, but we want to hear even more of what God is doing in this place. Yes. I mean, even though we want to definitely recognize those who have given their lives mm -hmm. for this country this weekend, we also yes. never want to forget of what God is doing in your life. Yes. And speaking of that, Memorial Day. Yes. Memorial Day weekend. Ooh. We want to say happy Memorial Day weekend, but uh, we want Day. to just remember every single one of you that have uh, maybe experienced loss from somebody that has served our country um, in our military. We know that we have a lot of people that are currently in the military here at C3 Palm Springs. We know of some that are now retired, but also we have a lot of close family um, here at the church who have had loved ones that served that have passed away and uh this weekend we really really want to uh sh express our love yes and remember those who have lost their lives for our freedom yes our deepest thank you yes absolutely uh what's next oh that's what we're doing is because of that incredible uh this incredible weekend we have a video that we wanted to show um, especially for those um, who have either served or who have lost their lives. Um, so um, take a look at this video, and thank you, thank you, thank you so much. On this day, we remember. We remember your calling. We remember your courage. We remember your sacrifice. We remember your life. We remember what it cost you to pledge your allegiance to your country. Because of you, we can walk in liberty. Because of you, we can sleep in peace. Because of you, the flag is still there. Because of you, this is the land of the free. Because of you, this is the home of the brave. To the families and friends of the heroes we've lost, we salute you. Welcome. What's going on? Welcome, welcome. Yes, yes. And thank you for all of those that have served. And again, yes. um, thank you that you have given your life for our freedom. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you so yes, much. Yes, thank you for your hardcore sacrifice. And because yes. of that, I'm enjoying my hardcore coffee this morning just for you. Thank you. Mm. But you know what? Uh, if you have not checked your email yes. yet. Uh, we extremely important. The church has emailed uh, each and every one of you who have, are on our email chain, uh, which is an important reason to be a part of the emails, yeah. because we want you to, uh, we will be opening up the church for an adult service mm -hmm. next Sunday, but you need to RSVP yeah. because we want to make sure that we have the safe amount yes. uh, capacity within the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. So it is very important to either go to the church center app. Yep. Or check your email. If it's not in the email, 
Uh, check the junk mail. Mm -hmm. I've heard some people uh, yeah. reporting that it's in there. Mm -hmm. Rude. Um, but we want to make sure. Oh, and go on or go on the website. Yes. Uh, and RSVP if you want to come next week. Yes. Uh, and that's going to be very important. Yeah. So it's extremely, extreme, extremely vital that you go to Church Center app and the website to um, reserve your spot. Um, the reason that we need to reserve our spots is so that we can know for a fact how many people will be in the building for your safety. We don't want to just open up the doors and just allow a, a, a flood of people to come in, but we want to make sure that safety comes first. Yes. So we have been doing as much as we can on our end to create a safe environment here um, with allowing us to um, practice social, uh, physical distancing in the building. Um, so go to your emails um, and make sure to RSVP for this coming week's um, service. Yes. I'm so looking forward to it. It's going to be a good time. Yes. What are s and, and even comment in the, the mm. comment section. Tell us what yeah. you are missing most about church. Yes. yes. Absolutely. And for all of those that will not be able to make it, um, or maybe you don't feel comfortable yet coming into the building, no uh, we are going to be having a incredible having an incredible incredible time online next week also yes. so we so you aren't going to be missing um, a crazy time we want to make sure that the online experience is just as powerful as um, what's going to be happening inside the building yes and even though we won't be having uh, children's ministry or youth when we first open mm -hmm. just to be safe we will still be having our c3 kids lessons online so you'll still want to tune in for that i've heard of a little glimpse of this week's is going to be pretty awesome uh adorable oh my gosh i'm pretty You're not gonna miss it but i don't know about you i am ready for this week's worship experience uh we're gonna head into worship and then we're gonna go straight in the powerful word that pastor Eddie has for yes. us are you ready i'm ready let's do this let's go And I searched the world But it couldn't fill me And man's empty praise And treasures that fail I never know Then you came along And put me back together is now satisfied here in your love oh there's nothing better than you lord there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing nothing is better than you Yes, I know it's true. Oh, I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain. He's the God of the valley And there's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. 
turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who cares. You turn morning to dancing. Shame into glory. You're the only one who cares. You turn grace into God. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who cares. You're the Spirit of the Lord is here. With evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your
C3 Palm Springs, Pastor Eddie here, and we're so glad that you're joining us today online. I'm excited about today's message, but before we get into the message, I just want to uh, thank all of you for all that you've been doing, connecting with us on Zoom meetups, uh, faithful with your tithes and offerings, and just encouraging us as we continue to have church online. But also, too, today I just want to uh, thank all those that have given their lives. Today is Memorial Day weekend, and uh, we wouldn't be doing what we do if it hasn't been for those that have fought for our freedom. And so today, what a, what a great day to celebrate the freedoms that we have, because on Friday, our president, President Trump, deemed churches a place of worship as essential. If you could go out and buy... Weed. If you could go out to a, a liquor store and buy alcohol, why not the church be essential? So I'm excited because even today we're still fighting for a Christian and our religious liberty. So I wanted to thank our president for that. And with that, next week we are going to have church in the house. Obviously, uh, our host today, they shared to you about how it's going to be taking place. And so I want you to respect that and just continue to pray as we begin to open up. But for today, we're going to get into the word of God and I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you, Lord. For today, I thank you for the message, for the word that's about to go forth. And I'm praying, Lord, it's going to touch and change every heart, every life that is listening at the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're continuing a series. It's called I Will. And we, we've been looking over the last few weeks in the book of Habakkuk. The book of Habakkuk is only three chapters. And we see that as it starts off, Habakkuk is living in overwhelming circumstances. The times were crazy. And I wanted to do this series because I think we're living in some crazy times. And unless we know how to navigate through these times, it will be difficult for us to understand how could we have that joy in our life and still continue on. And here he is, he's, he, he has anxiety and he's just worried about so many things at the beginning. But the thing is, is what happens and what's exciting, exciting is to see after the end of the third chapter, he is no longer controlled by the anxiety. I'm believing with this series and with this message today that as we go through some things that we won't be longer, any longer uh, controlled by the anxiety of what's taking place, but have the peace and the joy that surpasses all understanding in our lives, control our thoughts and the I wills in our lives. You see, Habakkuk gets from that place of fixing his hope on God. And that's what we as a church, as a pastor, my desire is to get you to have your focus not on the things of this world, not on the COVID-19 or coronavirus or the loss of job or lack of income, but I want you to have your, your eyes fixed on God and have your eyes fixed on the hope of promise in Jesus Christ is his name. He goes from doubting the situation, doubting God, wondering if God was even around, to having faith. He goes from a, a, a confused time, confused why all, all this taking place, why is God allowing this to take place, to a place of understanding. He goes from fear in his life to having hope in his life. And so it's so, so important for us to understand what did he do? You may be just joining us for the very first time and, and haven't heard the last couple messages. I encourage you to either go on our Facebook or YouTube to listen to those messages. But what we want to do is see what did he do. The circumstances didn't change, but his attitude changed. His attitude changed by two powerful words, I will. Everybody say that. I will. I will has to do with the decision that you make. I can't make the I will decision for you. You have to make the I will decision. And he comes along and he says with this in his heart, I will. It's a conscious decision that we make. We have what's, uh, we have what's amazing that God has given us is a free will. He allows us to say I will either serve him or I will not serve him. He is not going to tell you what to do, but he's going to allow you to make the choice, to make the right decision. And we see here in the book of Habakkuk, at the very 
end of the book, the last three verses in chapter 3, Habakkuk comes along. The circumstances didn't change. He says, you know, the fig tree, you know what? It's still not blossoming. There's no fruit on the vines. The labor of the olive may fail, and there's no food, and the flock will be cut off, and there's no herds in the stall. It's still a crazy time. There, it still looks like there is no hope. But yet he comes along with these two powerful words and says, yet I will. Circumstance didn't change, but his attitude changed. He says, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will praise my God even in the midst of everything that's going on. And he says, I will have joy in the God of my salvation. If anything, we should say, I will serve God because of the joy that he gives me because I am saved. I'm no longer on my way to hell, but I have eternal life there waiting for me. And then he says these words. He says, I will join the Lord, God of my salvation. The Lord is my God and my strength, and he will. And I love this part because when we do our part, God will do his part. God says that he will make us like deer's feet, and he will make us walk on high hills. And, and God says when we do our part, when we say, I will, praise God, God comes along and says that he will. So today's message is making the right I will your declaration. Making the right I will your declaration. Like I said, we have a free will. We have the decision to say, yes, I will serve God. Yes, I'll have a good attitude. Yes, I will make the right decisions. Or we could, I could, we could say to ourselves, I will be selfish. I will have anxiety. I will operate in fear. And it's up to us, and it's our choice in what we do. The right side of living has to do with a choice. And a good and a right I will. Uh, the book of De Deuteronomy says this. I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today. That I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, God says, therefore, choose life. He's saying you have a choice. If you want to live in death and in cursings, you have a choice to live cursed. You have a choice to live in death. But God says, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. He says, I want you to choose life. I want you to choose blessing. And so it's that attitude on how we choose and what we choose will make the determination on how we get through these difficult times to allow us to come out on the other side victorious and not beat up disgusted and, and broken, but having the hope of God in our lives. I want to look at what causes us to make the right choice. I want to look at what causes us to make the right decisions in our life because in all reality, I'm going to share a message today. And if you don't have a pencil and paper, I want you to get one because I'm going to draw a little illustration, a, di a diagram that will help you to understand how we make the right choices, how we make the right decisions in our life, the right I will. Now, we need to understand on what we are made up of. The Bible says... 1 Thessalonians 5.23, may the God of peace himself sanctify you, set you apart completely, and that may your whole spirit, soul, and body be, be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, we're made up of a whole, and that whole is made up of a body, soul, and a spirit. Now, I want you to understand, we have a, a body the body is, in the Bible, is often uh, uh, talked about as the flesh. It's always, uh, oftentimes, talked about uh, worldliness. It's, uh, you see the word carnality in there. Um, that's what the body is. We are a body. We house a spirit. Those that are born of the spirit of God, that's why the Bible says that we become born again because our spirit is born again. So we have a spirit as believers living on the inside of us, but we also have a soul. The soul is the mind, your will, your emotions, it's the, your thinking. And so the Bible says that he wants us to live our lives whole. 
And it's so important for us to recognize and understand that this is what we're made up of. But what gets us to that place of making the right decisions? Having the right I will because our soul has a will. Our soul lined up with the right thoughts, the right information, the right processing that goes through it will determine on having the right will in our lives. Now, Galatians says this. It says, I say, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walking in the spirit. That's what we want to do as believers. We want to walk in the spirit of God. If we walk in the spirit of God, we're not going to walk and operate in fear. It says, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that's fascinating because the Bible comes along and says this. It says, we are made up of three parts, body, soul, and spirit. Galatians says, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But the Bible says that the body and the spirit, the flesh and the spirit, cannot work together. They war against each other. And so what does that mean? So that means, as the Bible comes along and says in the Romans, the 8th chapter, verse 5, it says, for those who live according to the flesh, the body, if you live according to the flesh, those things that are contrary to God, set their minds, the soul, set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. So we see here that the spirit and the body, they're at war. They can't work together. But just like it said, the Bible said there that, that the, those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. So you go back and you look at the flesh. You look at the flesh setting the mind on the flesh. So that means since the spirit and the body cannot work together, the idea of the body is to try to get the soul to be in agreement with him. Because if we go back and we read the scripture, it says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. So, so, so you see the, the mind and your will and the emotions, your soul, if you set your mind on the flesh, all of a sudden, you're going to live according to the flesh. But the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, set their minds on the things of the spirit. So it's so important for us to understand body, soul, and spirit. So if the, the body, if we go back here and we look at the body and the spirit or warring against each other, what is their ammo? What is their purpose? Their purpose is to go for the soul and go for your mind and go for your will and your, and the, your thinking. And if the body can do that, all of a sudden it will have control and the spirit will have to submit. If the spirit gets, gets connected with the soul and your mind and your will and your thinking, all of a sudden the flesh has to commit to that. We look at it, and it's, it's kind of a simple illustration, but I think it's so powerful for us to understand, is if we look at it in a way that we've also and oftentimes have seen in cartoons, and different things like that is, is the very devil on the shoulder. It looks so simple, and it looks so childish. I remember uh, Daffy Duck. He had Daffy Ducks on the shoulder. I've seen Mickey Mouse, even Bart Simpson, Homer Simpson. I mean, we look at many people. And in all reality, there's so much truth to this. Because right here is the mind. It's your will and your emotions. And the Flesh, which is the devil because the flesh wars against the spirit. He comes along and says, oh, you know what? It's okay to have anger. It's, oh, it's okay to get mad. It's okay to get in depression. Uh, and the, the devil whispers in your ear, it's okay to do these things. You know, it's okay not to share. You get to keep all of that for yourself. Why do you want to share? But then all of a sudden we come along and see here's the 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 angel, the spirit of God, who whispers, don't listen to him. I know what's best. It's okay to share. It's okay not to get angry. I know the circumstances don't look like they should, but, but in all reality, they're going to be better. Just trust me. And the spirit 
and the body are warring, trying to get our attention. They're warring against us, trying to take control. And what we listen to the most, listen to me, what we listen to the most will take charge and allow us to make the right decision, make the wrong decision. To declare the right I will or declare the wrong I will. Now, Romans in the 8th chapter says this. To be carnally minded. Now, carnally minded is fleshly minded. Carnal, carnality, fleshly minded. The Bible says to be carnally minded is death. Sometimes we hear the word carnivorous. What is carnivorous? It's they're meat eaters. And, but the Bible says basically right here is to be carnally minded. To be carnally minded is death. Carnality, you meat, chili con carne. Isn't that, that where we get the word? In other words, so God is saying to be a meathead is death. When you become a meathead and you become carnally minded, when the body and the, and the soul work together, that produces death. You're walking left-sided. Now, I want you to think about these things because we want this to be simple. We don't want it to be difficult. But in all reality, we used to do this years ago, as I, I learned this years ago from my pastor, that uh, we would be able to catch ourselves. If we had a wrong attitude, we would say, you know what, wow, I'm left-sided. I'm sorry. Uh, we, we'd be able to connect ourselves and say, no, no, no I was left-sided. But the Bible says when the body and the soul work together together, the spirit has to submit, and all of a sudden, walking in the flesh brings forth death. But it also says, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So when the spirit and the soul work together, the flesh has to submit because whatever two parties are in agreement the third party has to submit. There's life and peace. It's so important for us to realize the importance of this. Now, the Bible comes along and says in Romans uh, uh, 8, chapter verse 13, 14, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. There it comes again. We don't want to live according to the flesh. Habakkuk, at the beginning of Habakkuk, he was living according to the flesh because he was listening to the circumstances around him. But he changed his attitude towards the end. It says, I will serve God in the midst of all this chaos and confusion. And so to live according to the flesh, you will die. So the, our, our, our process as believers is we don't want to walk and live according to the flesh. But if our mind is not renewed... The Bible says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be, renewed, uh, be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We need to have our minds renewed so we're not walking and living according to the flesh or else we will die. But by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body and you will live. So important. Now, the Bible comes along and tells us that the works of the flesh... This is what the works of the flesh will do to try to get your mind to work and cooperate with, the, with, it, with one another so the spirit does not have control in your life. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. They're evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, sorcery, uh, Sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalry. And you know what? We look at the list and go, oh, my gosh. And say, that's crazy. You may look at it and say, oh, that's not me. I don't do any of that stuff. But it says, and the likes. What is the likes? And the likes is basically things that are contrary to God's word. Things that don't line up with God's word. So that is the works of the flesh. So we come along and we see, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. So that's how we want to operate. That's how we want to live we want to live our lives where the Spirit of God is flowing with our mind and the will and emotions. 
the fruit of the Spirit, our, our mind and the will uh, and our thinking has to line up with the fruit of the Spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, goodness, faithfulness, kindness, temperance. That's what we want to operate in our, in our soul realm. Because if it doesn't, all of a sudden we're going to live according to the fleshly desires and our soul will work together and bring forth death. But if we get our soul lined up with our spirit, then all of a sudden we have life. You're driving down the road. I want, I want, I'm going to give you a little test. You're driving down the road. Somebody cuts you off. Your mind says, I'm going to chase that guy down and I'm going to flip him off. Who are you lining up with, the flesh, the body, or the spirit? It's the body. Because God would never say, go after that person and flip him off. Go after that person and do unto him what he did unto you. He wouldn't say that. So you would be walking left-sided. Now, if I said to you, if that guy, same guy comes along, you're commuting to work, and it's the same guy every day, he comes and swipes right in front of you. And all of a sudden, you said to himself, God, I pray that you would watch and protect him. I pray that he would not get in an accident. Lord, he must be in a hurry. What side would you be operating in? You would be operating on the right side. And all of a sudden, because your mind and your will and the motions are operating in the, the attributes of God, and so it lines up with the spirit, so the flesh has to submit, and all of a sudden, it brings forth life. And that's why it's so amazing as a guy. The devil tries to put temptations out there. That now summer's coming along. He's going to try to put a temptation of, of, of girls on the beach and they're half-dressed. And all of a sudden you're walking down the beach and you look and you're looking a little bit longer than you should. All of a sudden, what side? That's left-sided. Because all of a sudden it becomes the lust of the flesh. But if you're walking down, you're at the same beach, the same thing is going on, and you look and you say, oh, my gosh, and you turned away. And you say, decide to say, I'm not going to take another look. I'm not going to take another peek. I'm not going to look off the side so my wife doesn't see me uh, looking. What side are you operating? You're operating on the right side. In other, in other words, what it does, it brings forth life. You started off with the... This coronavirus, we're on 11 weeks now in, in having church online. And all of a sudden you begin to think, is God real? Do you think God would allow this to happen? What's going on? I don't know if I could trust God anymore. I lost my job and I'm about to lose my home. And I don't know if I'm going to have a job when I get back. And all of a sudden you go down this rabbit trail. And your mind and your soul and your will and emotions, your thinking, all of a sudden goes to that attitude. It's not lined up with the spirit of God. It's lined up with the body, with the worldly, with the flesh. And all of a sudden it brings forth death. You're left-sided. But during this time, if you say, okay, God, I'm going to look at this as a time for me to get closer to you. I'm going to look at this time. Now I have no excuses. I'm going to connect with my kids. I'm going to connect with my wife. God, I know that when you close one door, you're going to open up another door, and it's going to be a better door. I know when I've lost in this area, Lord, I know that I'm going to gain in another because I trust you as my provider. All of a sudden, you're operating on the right side. Your soul and your will and your emotions operate with the Spirit of God, and it brings forth life. How do you know what the right I will is? The right I will lines up with the Spirit of God, lines up with the Word of God. And it's so important for us to understand and so important for us to, to realize the importance of the right I will in our lives. How do we know that? How do we know what the right I will is? I love what the Bible says, Lord, your word have I hid in my heart that I should not sin against you. When we have the word of God, when we have the promises of God, when we know the character, the nature, and the attributes of God, all of a sudden our minds will be able to line up with the word of God. If we don't, we're always going to listen to media. We're going to listen to society. We're going to listen to the garbage of this world. And we will make decisions based on the flesh 
And our I wills will be contrary to the word of God. If your I will is contrary to the word of God, if your I will is in fear, if your I will uh, is in doubt, if your I will is with unbelief, if your I will is I'm going to get sick, if your I will is I'm going to lose, you're going to be operating left-sided according to the flesh, and it brings forth death in your life. People, church, let's operate on the right side of life. Let's make the right decisions, the right I will in our lives. Let's make that a declaration that we will go forward and live right-sided. I want you just this week, when you're beginning to have a bad attitude, recognize that it's not from God and recognize and say, you know what, man, I was left-sided. Man, the devil's speaking on my shoulder. And yes, man, he's speaking. But... The Spirit of God is going to speak louder. And you say, no, I'm not going to get down that road. Nope, I'm not going to go there. Nope, I'm going to ask for forgiveness. No, I'm not going to hold that grudge. I'm going to uh, forgive that person. Whatever it is, and, and recognize and say, you know what? I'm living right-sided. That was a right-sided decision. Why? Because my mind, my thinking my will and emotions lined up with the Spirit of God living on the inside of me. Flesh, you have to submit. Flesh, you need to get down because we're going to go forward with God. Man, I don't know about you, but I, I thought this was important because I've been preaching about, about Habakkuk saying, I will. I will rejoice. I will have praise God. I will. But I wanted to say, how do we get to that place? Operating. Operating. In the spirit of God, having the fruit of the spirit operating in our lives, knowing the promises of God are yes and amen. Making the right I will your declaration. Let's do that today. I hope you got something out of that. I hope it encouraged you. I hope it helps you this week to, to realize when you're going down the wrong path, when you're going left-sided and, and say, no, I'm not going to go left-sided anymore. I'm going to go right-sided. When the two, the two, uh, when the, the devil and the, the angel are on your shoulder, that you say, devil, get out of here. I'm going to line up with the Spirit of God because the Spirit of God is what's going to bring me life. And uh, I just believe that it's going to be something that's going to be powerful as we move forward in our lives. Wow. Uh, I just, man, I'm preaching myself happy. Preaching myself happy today. I'm excited about what God is doing. Well, before we uh, continue on, we're going to pass it back to the host here in a moment. But before I do, I just want to make sure if you are at this place in your life where you don't know God, you know who's controlling your life, your flesh, your body. Because when Adam and Eve came to this earth, Death came to our bodies, separation from God. But Jesus Christ came that we might have life and life abundantly. So when Jesus says, if you want to get to heaven, you must be born again, when Nicodemus came to him at night, he says, what do you mean? I'm old. How do I go back in my mother's womb? He says, no, that which is born of spirit is spirit, but that which is born of flesh is flesh. Your flesh was born on this earth, which brought separation from God. But when you were born of the spirit of God, when you said yes to Jesus Christ, all of a sudden your spirit became alive. And that's when you became whole, body, soul, and spirit. But as we learn today that if the spirit and the flesh war against each other because the flesh doesn't like that the spirit now has a voice in your life, now the flesh is going to try to get to your mind and the, the spirit is going to try to get to your mind. And whatever two parties work together, the third party has to come in alignment. So my thing is for you today, if you're not born again, you're going to always operate in the flesh. You're always going to live that life separated from God. But if you say yes to Jesus Christ, today your spirit can be born again. And then you will be able to right, have the right decisions and make the right decisions in life. So what I want to do today, if you've never said yes to Jesus, or if you have, if you've never followed through,
Maybe you have at one time, but you never uh, were, were com- you've always been conformed to the patterns of this world, but never re- uh, transformed by the renewing of your mind. Today is an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. So I want you to pray this prayer with me as you invite the Lord. Make this decision. Live right side of today by saying yes to Jesus Christ. Say, Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. Forgive me my sins and be Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we're so excited that you said yes to Jesus. If that's you, we want to help you. We want to resource you. We want to get you connected uh, and help you to grow so you are able to make the right decisions, so you are able to know what the will of God is for your life. So the right I will that you make will be your declaration. God bless you. We'll see you soon on the Zoom meeting. We'll see you this week. But if anything, we're going to see you next week as we continue online but also in person. God bless you. Hey, guys, I'm going to pass it back to you. Come on. Come on. That message is powerful. Foyer. Powerful. Hey, well, congratulations to everybody who made the decision to say yes to God. You know, if you made that decision, we want to equip you. We want to uh, inform you, get your resources. There should be a link in the bio below. Yep. Uh, definitely connect uh, with us because we want to equip you for your next steps. Absolutely. And for everybody that has stayed faithful with your tithes and offerings, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for partnering with us. Because of your generosity, we've been able to feed thousands of I'm telling you, thousands of people across this quarantine, (coughs) COVID-19 families, uh, we've been able to feed thousands of families because of your generosity. So thank you again. Thank you so much for everything that you do. And what I love about this is we've heard so many powerful stories. Yes. Sorry, I have something in my throat. It's you know what? You, you you partnered with us and allowed us mm-hmm. to partner with uh, great organizations like the Narrow yes. Door. So we are feeding uh, both physically and then also you allow us to continue feeding spiritually. Yes. So thank you. And we've heard so many powerful praise reports that we wanted to share some of the ones that we have received with you. And yes. if you're tuning in right now, continue to put in the in, in the chat, continue to put in. Um, maybe the comments, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, wherever you're tuning in from, write it in. Allow everybody that's in that chat to hear what God has been doing in your life. But we wanted to share some with you because we've gotten so many. So do you want to take over from that? Yeah, uh, especially with everything. I mean, we want to definitely praise um, a, a president who allows, uh, who, who fights for churches to reopen, but Absolutely. also who allowed a way um, and blessed so many families with uh, a stimulus check. Yeah. When people thought during this situation, losing jobs and losing a provision, that they thought they would be yeah. um, uh, in the hole. But yeah. a lot of people have been blessed through the situation. Mm-hmm. So we definitely want to bless or uh, thank yeah. um, the government Absolutely. for allowing uh, stuff like that. Absolutely. People are praising God that God has supplied more than enough. And because of that, they're able to bless others over and above. That's just incredible that in this time to where most people think that they are depleted, God is blessing his family, blessing his kids so much that they're able to bless others over and above. That's amazing. And then we also have uh, praise reports about families growing closer and also through this growing healthy spiritual habits of reading the word and praying together. Families have been making efforts. People they are praising God that their families have been making efforts to connect more than they ever have. Powerful. And we have uh, reports of a uh, an engagement. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. And on top of an engagement, putting in a uh, uh, an, an offer, offer for a house. And that is they're amazing. in escrow. And in escrow. On, on the house. Wow. Unbelievable. God blessing is blessing upon blessings his upon blessings. family. Uh, we have a family that has paid off thousands of dollars of debt. Can we get an amen whoop to whoop. paying off debt? Whoop amen. Whoop. We also have uh, uh, families who are families of families that attend this church who are tuning in to get a great word from God. So we're so blessed for the prayers uh, of families. Uh, People are praising God that he has kept their family healthy and employed in this time. Yes. uh, I mean, we have so many, uh, so many blessings, praise reports coming in. Mm -hmm. Um, If you have any more. We have another one. (gasps) Someone's praising God that they're protected and filled with grace. That's always a great praise report right there. 
Yes, and then we also have, I mean, we, uh, I mean, I, I love how God just goes over and above. Yes. God blesses and he stays uh, true to his word. Yeah, I love, you know what I, I love? I, I, I'm i grateful for uh, Pastor Samuel Duth. Yes. He shared a, a great word on um, Instagram just about uh, not having the um, victim mentality. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, even though our government is assisting, don't stay in that assistance, yeah. but bless God for the, the future blessing. Amen. Powerful, powerful, powerful day. And, you know, the, what God has been doing, the praise reports don't stop today. We know that God is continually, continually moving in your life. I know he's moving in our life. I know he's in, in the staff. He's in, in the volunteers, in our entire team. And we know that he's working in your life, too. So we would love to hear from you and what God is doing in your life, what he's doing in your family's life, maybe in your friend's life. Um, I know that God is moving, and uh, I'm excited to hear what he is going to continue to do in the lives of each of us. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. Well, today was a powerful, powerful day. Thank you for tuning in. Um, you know what we would ask you to do right now before we end is take a picture wherever you are of you watching. Maybe it's a selfie. Maybe you can get a family member to take it of you. Maybe you can take a selfie of the entire family. We, everyone that's right here, they're doing it right now. They're All about production to get that team posted. So wherever you are, if you're in the, your living room, your kitchen, uh, don't do it if you're in the bathroom. Maybe you're in your room. True that. Uh, wherever you are, take a, take a selfie. Let's do it right now. Yes. You know, I, there was also another praise report. Um, uh, Jeff Dean said that he saw a sniper monkey while he was on his hike. <laughs> so we uh, are grateful for the um, protection. There's oh, our. There we go. One, two, three. There we go. Love it. There's our Got production it. team and amazing pastors. Yes. Man, powerful day. And again, we want to remind all of you, yes, to take the photos, post them, tag us. But also, if you are wanting to attend next week, go yes. to your email um, or go to the Church Center app and reserve your spot. If you do not reserve your spot, this is a little harsh, but you will not be allowed in the building because we have to take we have to take uh, the proper um, number of people that are allowed in the building. So yes. go reserve reserve your spot. We are excited for a powerful, powerful week. And thank you again for your continued support yes. on allowing us to uh, spread God's word. Yes, and we continue to. Um, you know, just love people to life. Yes. Thank you. We love you. Have a great week. We'll see you soon.